there's one more thing that I would like to get done before we put the motor in. I got the motor ready to go. We're going to go over that in a little bit. But I wanted to go ahead and change out these strut rods because they're just, they're, they're just, you know, just a tiny bit crunchy. You know, I'm thinking it's probably not too good. So I figure we'll change these out because we got all this room up in here. So once we put the engine in, especially over here with the transmission linkage, of course you can't see that. Maybe I should do that so you can see it. But right over here. Okay, here, right here, see that? We got the tranny linkage and everything else going to be in the way. So I decided maybe we ought to change these out before we go sticking a big old engine in the way. What do you think? Not a bad idea, right? So that's what we're going to do right now is we're going to go ahead and change out these strut rod bushings. I ordered those the same time I ordered the clutch. And y'all need to like stay tuned for that. The clutch scenario goes, whoo-wee. It was a scenario, a fiasco, if you will. They, it's yeah, you, you gotta just wait and see for yourself because that whole clutch situation is, it was, how shall we say, a challenge. We'll just go with that, it was a challenge. So anyway, stay tuned. Let's go ahead and get these strut rod bushes changed out. I figured since on the last video I showed repairing this, but I didn't show the finished product. So I thought just so y'all can see, there's the finished product. That's how she's gonna live. I put the undercoating on it. That's the patch, as you can see. I didn't blend it in to make it look like it was supposed to be there, just not that type of restoration. But I did kinda spruce it all up, try to make it all look halfway decent, you know? So it's all black. There's those ugly spots we're going to fix later from up above. And just, we just kind of, you know, it gets a little dark back in here. See if I can shed some light on the subject. There we go. So there we go on the, the back of that. And just kind of give a brief look see into the bottom of the car and what we did so there's those ugly spots but they're sealed at the very least and so when I finally get around to to doing the repairs then at least we know it wasn't getting any worse and that's that's pretty much what this was all about is just stopping it from getting any worse. Okay, that's that. Let's get to the engine. Do yourself a favor and always take this one off first. If you take these off first, when you go to spin this off, this thing's going to want to spin out of control. And as usual, because I can't help myself, while I got these off, I'm going to go ahead and wire brush them and clean them up, throw a little pretty stuff on there. No undercoat. This will just be paint. Just put a little black paint on there just to make it a little better. So anyway, this is probably going to require, yep, it's going to require a universal. So hang tight while I get one. go deep on that one so let's get a deep socket
lubrication on there. Now, just for reference, the fatter nut, well, let's do it this way so you can see. I don't know that it really makes a big difference, but if you look at the two nuts, the fatter one is, uh, that light just wants to shine in your eyes. The fatter one is uh, the one that goes first, and then this one's the lock nut that locks it down. So, yep, so we're good there. We got that loose. I put a little lubrication on there. Now we're going to go ahead over to these here, and we're going to zing them off. I kind of got prepared and have my socket ready, but what I didn't do is get a wrench for the top half because it's just a nut and bolt. So let me go fetch one of those. I've seen this done on other videos. So I, I think I'm going to try it too. Instead of fetching tools, I'm going to do it by magic. You ready? There it is. Well, I'll be dipped. It worked. I'm going to have to try that more often. Sure beats chasing tools down. Man. All right. Well, let's get started. It should be the right size since we use magic. And let's see. Yep. Sure enough. Magic stuff's pretty cool. So, anyway. There we go. Oh, that's going to be a fun one. Boy, she really kind of tugs at you a little bit trying to get her out of there. Kind of dry. If you look, needed. I lubed it up a little bit. It just didn't help much because... Stuff don't flow uphill, I noticed. So you can spray all you want on the bottom of the bolt, but it really doesn't go anywhere. It's a lot of greasy, grimy, nasty up here. So. Oh. I must have hit the thingy. Here we go. Nope. What happened? What? I think if you remember in the other video, I told you not to buy cheap batteries. That's why. <sighs> Maybe magic will give me a new battery. Well, there we go. Six hours and 315 batteries later, we have it off. You know, back in the old days, we would just use, and it's actually not that long ago for me, uh, just air tools. And they work just fine, especially here in the shop. And... I just get irritated with the hose getting all tangled up and everything. And so I really like these cordless ones. But dang, I need a good battery. So I have bought a new tool. I think you all saw it in another video, the Milwaukee. So far so good on that one. But it's a ratchet, not, a, not an impact. So for now, the old Ryobi's are working just fine. I just got to change batteries more often than I like. But, you know, nothing's perfect. So there we go, we got this loose. Whoa, catch it. Let's slide her out of here. And here's the old bushing. You guess. Oh, it came out in two pieces. <laughs> there you go. Not, not pretty. Not pretty at all. You know, I think I positioned that light in the wrong place. But can't help it. That's the one in the shop. It's hanging. I don't have any way around it. But when we get to the other side, it won't be there. But here we go. One really... Look, here's the metal insert. <laughs> right there. So, <laughs> that's that. But let's get this out. I'm going to clean her up a little bit with some uh, with a wire brush and put a little paint paint on there. And then we'll get started on the other side. I thought this would be worth mentioning. This is the back nut on it. This is the one that was behind the washer on the back side. Don't move it or it might throw things out of whack for you. If it was aligned, of course, with it all worn out like that, God only knows. But I'm going to leave it right there. And hopefully everything will go right back the way it's supposed to from there. If we have to, we'll turn it back a little if there's not enough room or whatever. But hopefully we'll leave it alone. When they align the front end, I'm guessing that they would adjust that. 
to, uh, you know, make it align better. But I'm going to leave it alone. Leave it in the same spot. I suggest you do the same until you can get it and get it in alignment. But we're going to clean this nasty thing up. Off camera. No sense watching me wire brush something again. Because I think y'all have watched me wire brush. Oh, 985 things. Something like that. Maybe more. I don't know. But let's go clean this up. I figure while the paint's drying on that one, we'll get started on this one. We are off to the races like a herd of turtles. Well, maybe I ought to put a little spray lube on there. See if we can't get this one to come off a little easier. Okay, maybe we'll put a lot. Here we go. Onward and upward. could be wrong, but he, whoever did these had this end, the rounded end, towards the bushing. Something tells me you're supposed to put the cupped end around the bushing, right? You know, put something in the comments if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure you're supposed to put the cupped end around the, the bushing. If not, I've been doing it wrong for 40 years, which is possible, but I guess it works either way. I don't even know how they just make them flat, but I'm putting it back in the other way. But anyhow, let's go ahead and continue on this quest. And hopefully the paint will be dry. There is some serious goo up here. The other one was too. I literally scraped it off with a with a scraper before I wire brushed it. It just had some some stuff. There we go. Now we're cooking with real butter. Come on, get on there. Well, that wasn't too bad, now was it? Oh, she's she's on there. Here we go. That one don't want to play nice. Came off nice and easy, but doesn't want to come out of the hole. So we're going to maybe persuade it a little. Oh, maybe not. We may. Let's try loosening up some more. Maybe she's binding. Some whoop. <laughs> Pieces are breaking. Imagine that. I don't want to smack it with my wrench. Eh, okay. Maybe I'll smack it with my wrench. <laughs> it's going to get a non-abrasive hammer, but eh, that worked. Okay, while well, you're not seeing anything going on, because I'm trying to get the nut out of the socket, and it doesn't want to come. I, it worked every time. If, if it doesn't come, hit it with something. You hit it, it works. I don't know why. Hitting stuff helps <laughs> in more ways than one. You know, if it's irritating you, hit it. Just make sure you don't hit it with anything that's going to hurt it. Then you make more trouble. Golly, there's some goo up here. Look at that. I guess it's a good place for like if your wheel cylinders are leaking or 
your grease boot's got a hole in it, or your oil and your engine's leaking, it all ends up on the lower control arm. It makes this nice sludge, so nothing rusts, you know. There we go. That one came right out. Off we go like a snail parade. Ta-da. I'm probably going to have to scrape that clean. Eh, maybe not. It actually feels pretty clean now that I got rid of all the goo. But might go back in nice and clean. So we're going to go ahead and clean this one up too. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. See all that sludge on there? That's just yuck. Look at that. Ew. Look at that. That's what I had. This one was this one's a little worse, but I'm gonna clean all that up. And then we'll hopefully by then the paint will be dry on the other one. And we'll get started putting it all back together. Okay, I have a question for you all. And I'm gonna wing it. But we have this. Goes in this hole. Kinda takes up a little like a washer. And I like it. But does it go on the front or go on the back I don't know so I'm gonna put it on the back and I don't know why I'm guessing because if you hit the wheel on a big pothole it's gonna try to drive strut that way right so I figured a little more you know a little more like this little piece of tin is gonna help but I'm thinking that's how I'm thinking. I could be wrong. So if anybody knows better than I do, like the people who make these things, this is these are polyurethane instead of the. Oh, I almost forgot. You got to put grease on a polyurethane. If you don't, it squeaks like crazy. So I'm gonna go get me some grease. I'm gonna grease up my little bushings here, and then we're gonna. I'm gonna put this one in the back, like this so, and uh, hope for the best. But. Let's go put some grease on here first. Okay, we got them properly greased up. And we're going to stick one in here, one in here. Oh, they're really greased up now because they like slippity slidey in there. Okay. Got this all purdied up. Got her painted up. And look, we got new washers that are all shiny. I didn't want to paint them because they had that nice little gold new look to them so i figure we'll just let them stay new looking so here we go and let's see do i remember which way these go do they go this way or do they go this way i'm thinking this way we'll find out because they got a little curve to them so we'll figure it out in a minute once we get her in here, whoop, she's going to want to, yep, that's how it goes, just like that. Okay. Well, that didn't work out so good, did it? There we go. Come on. Well, that's not going to be fun. Remember I said not to move this this nut? Well, with the new bushing, guess what? Yeah, you've got it. Because there's no way this is going there without bringing this back here. So, I guess we're going to stick her in a vise. Or, we, yeah, no, that's not going to happen. I was going to say we could bolt her up, and, but that ain't going to happen. So we're going to have to run this on back just so we can get that bushing on there. And uh, I guess, maybe we'll have to get a front end alignment. Maybe it has nothing to do with the alignment? I don't know. I think it does. But since we didn't move anything here, I'm, I'm gonna set her up you know, with these crushed up a little bit and the way it was. So let's go ahead and pull this back out of here.
It's the one thing about greasing stuff up. It's messy. Let's see if we can get that to stay. Eh, it's staying. It'll probably fall off while I'm cleaning this up. But I'm going to go ahead and run that nut down the back there. And we'll bring her back and see what happens. Well, I got it in there. And I got this all the way back. And I am getting a little bit of room, but I'm going to have to lift this up straight to get it to do what I want it to do. And then I can just barely get this caught on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on here loosely because if I sock this up, I'm not going to be able to get this on there because look, it's like way up here. So, and I think what I'm going to have to do is I may have to jack up on the, uh, the tire even to, uh, well, I might have to draw it in a little bit because she's still sitting back here pretty far. So, it's not going to be fun, fun, easy, easy. Uh, so we're going to have to draw it in some until these holes line up. Pulling, pulling down on this. I guess if worse comes to worse, we can clamp it, but or jack this up to bring it up so this is the strut arm is straight. But that look, that looks nice though, right? Uh, so let's go ahead and zing this down here a little bit. Maybe I've got it, this kind of caught up in here, so let's zing her on a little bit and see exactly what happens here. Turn the old gun on Titan, and let's run her down in there a little bit. Can I see? Yeah, I guess I can see the holes somewhat. Well, that's not going to work because this is going to want to turn. So, can't have that happening. So what we're going to have to do is maybe get a screwdriver or something and get her lined up, and that way she won't spin on me. Okay, got me a screwdriver. Okay, maybe that's not a screwdriver. Screwdriver idea didn't work. So we're gonna use an adjustable wrench. And we're gonna just snag her on there, just like that. And then we're gonna run this down here while we're holding it. Let's see how that goes. Until then I got the screwdriver to line it up when it comes time. So. because this one is compressing like crazy this one's not compressing at all that's just weird I don't know why it's, it's like that but let's see if my let's see if we got alignment here that... oh son of a gun look at that oh baby we got alignment so we're gonna see if we can't get one of these bolts caught and, you know, I probably should have cleaned these bolts off. Dadgum. I know it seems like a bit of a nuisance, but it's well worth it. You know, when you clean them up, the wrench goes on it nice. Of course, you take off that nice coat of grease that's keeping everything from rusting. But, you know, you got to do what you got to do. So we got this hole is lined up. Whether or not this nut's going to be long enough, the bolt's going to be long enough to go in all the way, that's going to be another question. Well, I think it is. If we take this out of here, the well, problem is going to be is I only got two hands. So I'm going to pull this down. Oh, really? They've got to go down. Well, maybe well. And she's going in. We're going to have to tap her in, I think. <sighs> this is going to be fun. Let me get something to do a little tapping with. Wait, I had I had that hammer, didn't I? Oh, yeah, here it is. The hammer, you know. It was a screwdriver earlier. It's a hammer now. So let's see. Okay, I need that extra hand, but here we go. Pull that in there. Well, I'm going to have to clamp her down. We'll get a little clamp, stick it on there, and that ought to fix us up good. Got me a clamp. This actually is a clamp. 
Uh, put her in here. Spin her up in there. And just kind of bring her on down. not want to play nice but we're, we're getting her we're just gonna get her enough to get this bolt caught because it's wanting to run around the edge here it might fall off because it's really running around the edge here I'm not sticking my head in the middle of the camera on that. But there we go. We got that caught. Give it a quick run up in there. I probably stuck my head in all of these videos, so it'll be useless. Okay. Now, we don't want to sock it down yet because we may have to adjust things We're trying to get the other bolt in there so let's let's get the other one caught and then we'll worry about sucking her down I think they named this wrong. This is a multi-tool. They call it an adjustable wrench. I guess adjustable works because it adjusts from a screwdriver to a pick to a hammer to a wrench and to a lever. Maybe some other uses. We'll see what other uses we can find for this, but I think multi-wrench would be better. Watch how nice and easy the wrench goes on here now. Look at that. Woo. Don't want to get your fingers caught in there, I'll tell you. All right. Those are nice and secure. Now, I wonder... If we start running this in there a little bit, because I don't want to, I don't know if you can see that, but this one's really crushed, and this one's not doing anything. So, I don't know what to do with that. I'm afraid that this little doohickey thingy is going to cut into my bushing. So I'm going to start turning this one and see how that goes. I'm not sure we really even have to go any further. It just looks weird because that one's so so crushed and that one's not. Maybe I shouldn't have put that in there. Maybe that needed to come out here. Well, I'll be dipped in horse bucky. I don't know. What do you think? I could just leave it like that and be perfectly happy. <sighs> I don't know. I just don't. I don't like the way that's in there. And I'm thinking, you know, maybe that's the one that should have had. I don't know. Let's just turn this a few times and see what happens. Turn it a few times and see what happens. Yep, it's just making it worse, I think.
Yeah, well, it's compressing this somewhat. Well, I guess it's just because of the, the angle, to be honest with you. Because if I look up in here, it's big, just like here. It's sticking out pretty much the same way. So I guess it's just because of the way the angle that this is at right now. And as the car goes back down to its normal stance, I'm guessing would be. So I guess that's all right like that. We'll, I don't know, I'll tighten it up a little bit more, see if I can take up this gap. And I'm just gonna call it good. And I'll probably have to take her for a front end alignment and I'll let the alignment specialist worry about that. I'm not afraid to admit I don't know everything. In fact, I know very little. <laughs> Working on cars like 40 something years. I still learn every day. But I think I'm going to call that good. Yep, we took up the gap there and the gap here. So I think we're going to leave it like that and move on to the other side. does it got the bushings in I'm 65% sure I did them right uh, so I'm gonna put how to on this but eh, it's this is how it could go I'm sure it'll work fine uh, I'm not I wasn't really sure about those little metal sockets that came with the kit because they weren't in the other one and the original so I put them in there. I don't know that it made a difference putting them front or back. I don't know. But I don't think it's going to make a difference. But I am going to have to do a front end alignment because I did notice that the wheel kind of moved when, uh, you know, I socked things down and pulled things into shape and lined things up. And the front, the front wheel was moving back and forth. So it's going to have to be aligned. So we'll get a four wheel alignment after we get this baby on the road. But after this, we're going to put the engine in. So I figured while the engine was out, we'd go ahead and do these bushings. Because that would have been a little bit of a humdinger with the motor in a way. Just because, you know, getting the gun up in there, trying to, you know, I would have had to wrench it all by hand. And then, of course, the multi-uses of a, an adjustable wrench. Multi-wrench, right? And uh, always use the right tool for the job. That's what my father always said. He did the same thing I'm doing. He never listened. But anyhow... Uh, that's it. Hey, if you like these videos, you like this one, please subscribe. If you don't like them, don't watch them. <laughs>